Non-communicable diseases, NCDs, are a group of conditions that are not infectious and cannot be transferred from one person to another. These diseases are a consequence of behavioral, hereditary or standard of life factors such as smoking and improper diet. These include cardiovascular diseases, cancer, mental health problems, diabetes, chronic respiratory diseases and musculoskeletal conditions. Chronic care of NCDs has been noted to strain household incomes as families in Kenya bear the burden of caring for loved ones ailing from NCDs. NCDs further contribute to household poverty as less income is channeled to investment, thereby stifling economic growth. This is compounded by lack of access to adequate health infrastructure to care for those affected by NCDs. For almost a decade now, the African Institute for Health and Development, AIHD, has been conducting research, training and advocacy in health and development that is contextually relevant to Kenya and the African continent to deal with the NCD's menace. The African Institute for Health and Development is a non-governmental organization established in June 2004 in Nairobi, Kenya. Its mandate is based on four key development issues, which are health, poverty alleviation, child health, gender, and youth. AIHD was formed by a group of researchers to create a link between research and uh, community action projects. Uh, a lot of research is being done, but there's no clear linkage between the results and uh, programs that can impact on people, on families, and on communities. Other program is uh, health promotion and uncommunicable diseases. Now, this program deals with the ways of promoting health in Africa and in Kenya in particular. And it is this program that is also closely linked to non-communicable diseases. Non-communicable diseases or conditions are conditions that are not transferable. Uh, like if you have cancer, for example, you cannot transfer it to the other person. If you have diabetes, it's very difficult to transfer it to the other person, unlike uh, infectious conditions. NCDs are the single biggest cause of death in the world today. Nine out of ten deaths from NCDs before the age of 60 globally occur in developing countries, especially in sub-Saharan Africa. The major non-communicable conditions globally are diabetes, cancers, and uh, chronic respiratory diseases. These four conditions causes over two-thirds of deaths globally every year. That is about 63% uh, of the global deaths every year are due to these four conditions. And these four conditions have got common risk factors, which are tobacco use, alcohol use, unhealthy diet and physical inactivity. Contrary to common perceptions of NCDs, these are not just diseases of the elderly and the wealthy in developed countries, they mostly affect poor people. Two decades ago, we could not talk of these conditions in Africa because they were known as conditions of the affluent. But I'm telling you today, they are no longer conditions of the affluent because you go to our slums today, you'll find people that are having non-communicable conditions. You go to the slums, you find most of our youths, most of our, the people there are smoking. And they are smoking in the open. The people sitting ne nearby are also being affected. So you find that chronic, these chronic conditions are very prevalent now in the developing countries, where Kenya is one of them. The main factors aggravating to NCD's burden in developing countries are increased level of exposure to tobacco use, physical inactivity, unhealthy diets, harmful use of alcohol, ineffective and inequitable health facilities. NCDs are linked by common risk factors and are largely preventable through changes in lifestyle. Low-cost measures can prevent millions of premature deaths every year through action against NCD risk factors. Diabetes 
Diabetes is a group of metabolic diseases in which a person has high blood sugar either because the body does not produce enough insulin or because cells do not respond to the insulin that is produced. If you look at the common risk factors, smoking, uh, poor eating habits, lack of exercise, alcohol, overweight, they go across the board of almost, almost all NCDs. You take mental health, most of the issues that come with mental health have addiction drugs, smoking, alcohol. You look at cancer, stress, all these issues, they can go across. So if we all joined hands and tackled these common factors and went out to the community and preached and preached and preached about prevention, change our lifestyles, live healthy, eat healthy, exercise, stop smoking, stop uh, uh, this alcoholism, Believe you me, the NCD will be captured and put under the lid very fast. This high blood sugar produces the classical symptoms of frequent urination, increased thirst and hunger. My name is Joseph Mboi Mboro and I come from Thika, a place called uh, Katora. It's in Gatanga constituency. Uh, the first time I learned I had diabetes, I remember I was actually in Form 1. I had all these symptoms. First of all, I lost a lot of weight. I was taking a lot of water, urinating every now and then. My skin had dried up and all those things. Diabetes affects the way the body uses blood glucose. There are two types of diabetes. Type 1 diabetes develops when the immune system destroys the insulin producing cells in the pancreas, allowing a buildup of glucose in the blood. In type 2 diabetes, the cells resist the insulin and cause an increase of glucose in the blood. There are two types of uh, diabetes. There is type 1 diabetes uh, that normally tends to affect children but uh, can also affect people of any age. Then we also have type 2 diabetes that is seen more commonly in adults but we are seeing younger people, even uh, people in their 20s, teenagers, and even some, a few children below 10 years, now being affected with type 2 diabetes. We are particularly concerned about the threat of type 2 diabetes uh, because uh, type 2 diabetes is associated with lifestyle. And uh, it is um, provoked uh, by the way people handle their lives, the things they eat, as well as issues such as obesity, alcohol intake, as well as smoking and the lack of exercise. Diabetes has various complications. But the major complications that we are concerned about um, are things such as the effects that diabetes has on the eye. Diabetes is a cause of blindness. It can be either temporary or permanent. Uh, when you get a cataract in the lens of the eyes, that causes temporary blindness, which once you remove the cataract, then uh, the blindness goes away. But uh, when it affects the back of the eye, uh, the part called the retina or the center where the vision is focused, then you get permanent blindness. Uh, then uh, diabetes also can affect the teeth. Somebody can lose all their teeth as a result of uh, gum disease, uh, as well as uh, heart, the heart. Diabetes can affect the mus muscles of the heart and the conduction system resulting in uh, problems with heart rhythm and even heart failure. Uh, because of diabetes, you tend to have a problem with the blood vessels, clogging in the blood vessels, that can result in heart attack as well as stroke. Diabetes causes renal failure, and then also foot problems that can result in amputation, as well as sexual dysfunction in both men and women. Diabetes management should concentrate on keeping blood sugar levels as normal as possible. This can be accomplished with healthy diets, exercise and use of appropriate medication like insulin. Patients' education, understanding and participation is vital since the communications of diabetes are far less common and less severe in people who have well-managed blood sugar levels. <laughs> matatizo kiafya yametokana na lifestyle ile ambayo nilikuwa naishi. Nilipobadilisha lifestyle nimeona matatizo mengi yameenda. Mimi kwa muda wa miaka 12 nilikuwa sasa mimi nao nilikuwa nina ugonjwa wa sukari. Nikitumia tembe mbili asubuhi, tembe mbili jioni. 
Kwa hivyo 120 tablets a month times ile ya 12. Lakini nilipoamua kubadilisha my style leo sukari imeenda sana. Cancer, medically known as malignant neoplasm, is a broad group of various diseases, all involving unregulated cell growth. In cancer, cells divide and grow uncontrollably, forming malignant tumors and invade nearby body parts. The cancer may also spread to more distant parts of the body through bloodstream. Many things are known to increase the risk of cancer, including tobacco use, certain infections, radiation, lack of physical activity, poor diet, and obesity and environmental pollutants. The three most common cancers in women are breast, lung, and colorectal. Rectal cancer comes from uncontrolled cell growth in the colon or large intestines, rectum, or appendix. Its symptoms include rectal bleeding and anemia, which are sometimes associated with weight loss and changes in bowel habits. I was diagnosed with a cancer for the rectum in the year 2008, June. When my doctor came, he told me that I'm going to, to start the chemotherapy treatment. He told me one of the side effects is my hair will drop in maybe a week's time because it is like 99% side effect. And when I started chemo, it was really, really very challenging. The drugs were very expensive. I remember I used to, to spend like 100,000 per session, that is per month. Cancer not only affects the patients, but also strains household income, family resources, and the family members. When I saw my mom, I saw her hair had dropped, and she was looking pale, she was looking, you know, she, was, she had those symptoms for cancer. And me, I didn't know those symptoms. Breast cancer is a type of cancer originating from breast tissues, most commonly from the inner lining of the milk duct that supplies milk and mostly affects women. Here we got your cancer. In 1999, I was able to bila kuenda kwa kwa daktari lakini siku moja nikasikia hiyo kitu inaendelea tu nikaanza kusikia sasa kama ni kitu inakuwa lung cancer is at the top of the list for cancer deaths in men and women tobacco use is the leading cause of preventable deaths globally approximately 5.4 million people die each year from tobacco use this figure is likely to rise to more than 8 million deaths a year by 2030 and the vast majority deaths will occur in low to middle income countries. In Kenya, palliative care centers improve the quality of life of patients and their families facing the problem associated with life-threatening illnesses through the prevention and relief of suffering. Palliative care is actually defined by WHO World Health Organization is a care that's given to people with life-threatening illnesses. And by life-threatening illness, I mean diseases that are not curable, that cure is not possible. And so these patients can receive palliative care, which focuses on improving their quality of life by um, addressing their physical symptoms, especially pain, which is most times neglected, and also psychosocial problems, emotional, spiritual issues are addressed in palliative care. The other thing about palliative care is it actually extends beyond the patient. It also focuses on the family of the patient because family members also get affected. So it also gives support to the family members during the patient's illness, and when the patient dies also focuses on uh, uh, supporting patients, uh, family members through bereavement. So it really, the goal of palliative care is the best quality of, the best quality of life for the patients and their families. Cardiovascular diseases. Cardiovascular diseases are conditions that affect the heart and blood vessels. These include arteriosclerosis, coronary artery disease, hypertension, 
diseases of the aorta and its branches, disorders of the peripheral vascular system and congenital or heart disease. Regular cardiovascular exercise, also known as aerobic exercise, is one of the best things you can do to improve your overall health. Popular aerobic exercises including brisk walking, running, swimming, cycling and other activities that increase your heart rate for a period of time can also count. Overweight and obesity are major risk factors for cardiovascular diseases. I've been living with hypertension for almost 30 years now. I found out when I, I, was, I had my first pregnancy. That is when the doctor told me that I have hypertension. And from that time, I've been living with it up to date. The doctor said that is something that uh, some, uh, she, I can control it and uh, you should avoid to, to make me annoyed or not, be, you, can, you should not be annoyed or you should not be very excited because that is the time when, when you become annoyed or you become excited, then the pressure goes up. When I noticed, the legs were not swelling so much. But now the legs, are, you can see when the legs are swollen. Chronic respiratory diseases. The true cause of chronic diseases is personal behavior and use of tobacco particularly smoking, which is the number one cause of death and disability. Asthma. Asthma is the common chronic inflammatory disease of the airways, characterized by variable and recurring symptoms, reversible airflow obstruction and bronchospasm. Asthma symptoms include wheezing, coughing, chest tightness and shortness of breath. I'm a student, or rather I was a student at Easter University. I'm currently doing my internship at Camry. I'm asthmatic, yeah, and um, it's not like something that caught me by surprise or anything, since where I come from, it's genetic, so I was not the first one to have it. Yeah, so I was born with it, uh, and I've been living with it, like, since then, like, since I was very young. People love this conception that, a misconception that you get asthma attacks when it's cold. But really, it happens at any time, when it's dusty, when it's hot, when you do strenuous activities, when you exercise, when you do heavy work, you know, like all that. At every time, you need to build your medication. And the people around you need to understand that you're asthmatic. So that if you get an attack, and maybe you're not able to reach your medication, someone at least can be able to know, like, yeah, she's asthmatic, this is what we are supposed to do. It is caused by genetic and environmental factors. Symptoms can be prevented by avoiding triggers such as allergens and militants and by inhaling corticosteroids. But if you see a child is always fighting bouts of cold and cough and pneumonia in the case of Ryan, then take them to a reputable, spend the money, take them to a reputable hospital and find out what's wrong. Once you found out what is wrong, it's your duty to train the child how to manage the disease and for us that is what has helped us more otherwise we would still be managing this disease for Ryan. Train the child what they need to do, uh, let the child know what the triggers are. There's a place in Nairobi now where you can go and the child will be tested to find out what the triggers are and for Ryan it is dust and cold mostly. So for other children it is dog dander or cat dander, uh, for other children it is um, dust mites, for other children it is even uh, sugar. For other children, it is stress or bad news. Try not to limit the child because they are sick. Let the child go up to where they can go and let that activity to limit them. Let them see for themselves, but not always saying, don't do this, you're sick, don't do this, you're sick. Let them live as normal a life as, as possible. Musculoskeletal disease. Musculoskeletal disease affects the body's muscles, joints, tendons, ligaments and nerves. The disease affects the body's musculoskeletal system that provides form, support, stability and movement of the body. The disease affects the function and overall effectiveness of the system. 
It is difficult to diagnose the disease due to the close relation of the musculoskeletal system to other internal systems. Musculoskeletal diseases are the leading causes of early retirement. Those who retire before their age has reached, the majority retire because of musculoskeletal diseases. And uh, they are the leading causes of disability. Those who are uh, unable to perform their usual functions, most of them have got musculoskeletal diseases. The complications and risk factors really depends on, on, on each type of musculoskeletal conditions. The more commonest one of them is called osteoarthritis. And osteoarthritis is, is a, 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 a occurs when the, the damage occurs to the, the joints and the cartilages of the joints. It's like the joint has failed. So uh, the disability that occurs is because of pain. The patient experiences a lot of pain all the time. Then we have osteoporosis, which the bone becomes thin and causes multiple fracture, uh, vertebral fracture on the spine. The person walks stooped, the respiratory function is compromised, and, and the person can easily get a fracture. And once they get a fracture and are admitted to hospital, the, 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 the risk of dying are pretty high. In fact, the risk of dying from hip fracture following osteoporosis is just as high as the risk of dying from breast cancer. All of us are going to experience our musculoskeletal problems. There's nobody in this world who has not had a backache or who is going to have joint pain. So everybody, unlike cancer or heart disease or, or other chronic conditions which some people will get, musculoskeletal condi conditions everybody will get so long as you live uh, uh, reasonably long enough or, or everybody has experienced them. The second thing uh, that we need to understand is that some of them are preventable. For example, if uh, you're talking about osteoarthritis, if you reduce the body weight by 5%, you reduce your chances of getting them by 50%, especially osteoarthritis, your knee and hip. So they can be prevented. If you take calcium, adequate calcium in a diet, you can prevent osteoarthritis. If you take diet rich in vitamins, uh, in, in, in vegetables uh, and, and fruits, you can reduce the, 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 the burden of, of these conditions. Alcoholism. Alcoholism is among the risk factors of acquiring NCDs. Alcoholism is compulsive and uncontrolled consumption of alcoholic beverages, usually to the detriment of the drinker's health, personal relationships and social standing. My name is Anne Jerry Mathu. I am a recovering alcoholic. I abused alcohol for more than 20 years. I said abusing alcohol when I was barely 10 years old. From one and two, I said drinking, in school, it's sneaking alcohol into school, like uh, during outings, during midterms, when we're opening school. And actually, I made friends with seniors who are also drinking. Like, uh, you know, an alcoholic or a drug addict won't do drugs or alcohol alone. And uh, when my seniors left, I recruited other people who are my juniors. I joined Kenya Poly here in Nairobi and uh, for a diploma in IM, that is catering and housekeeping. And my drinking continued. Like, you know, like in Kenya Poly, I had a lot of freedom. We used to get uh, an allowance, which used to call a boom, of 500 shillings per month. Because I was an attention seeker, I wanted attention. I wanted, I didn't care whether it was positive or negative. I just wanted to be on top somewhere. So actually, uh, I started going for dancing competitions. Everywhere there's a dancing competition in Nairobi, I went. In Nakuru, I went. In uh, Nyeri, I went. I wanted fame. One day when we were in class, a lady came and told me, ah, and Matthew, you're in class and people are enrolling for Miss Kenya Beauty Contest. I literally left everything in class, rushed to KICC, enrolled for Miss Kenya Beauty Contest. And actually, when the D-Day came, I was number two in the whole of this republic. I started modeling for African heritage and uh, with a lot of money, with the beauty, I was still very young. And I, had, I got a lot of complementaries to big, big clubs like an uh, international casino, Boomerang, uh, 680, that's where I used to frequent, uh, uh, Hilton Hotel at the Jokies Club. I never graduated, I never passed my exams, most of my exams, I passed some, I didn't pass others, I was referred, I wasn't going to go back. I had that pride that every addict or every alcoholic has, like uh, 
addiction or alcoholism is a progressive disease. We have different stages, so you keep on moving from one stage to another. It's not something that is constant. So with every other drink, you become worse. We got a job at Moi Kweta Girls as the first caterers because I was government-sponsored student. So I had to work for the government to repay the loan. So in, Mo in Moi Kweta, in Nanyuki, I worked there for three years, and my drinking now even got worse because like, uh, I got my first baby, and uh, the father to the, 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 my daughter walked out on me. At 19, a very young mother, in a new town, in a new environment, I was so frustrated and my drinking got worse. I used to drink in the house and every evening I'm going out with friends. I worked there for three years. After the three years, I came back to Nairobi. Came to my Nairobi and uh, got a job with Pan Africa Hotel. And this time round, I'd gotten to the third stage of addiction where I was experiencing severe withdrawals in the morning. Even if you want to reach out to a, a, a person in a an addict or an alcoholic, bring out the good in them. They are not the worst people in the world. This person, it took him 15 minutes for him to make me see the light that there is another way of life. And actually, he's the one who helped me uh, now make that decision to go to the rehab. But then I didn't go immediately because I had fear of being rejected even in that rehab. So I told him, where in the camera stock, yako imeisha kenya brali, so wachana na mimi kabisa. And uh, the following day is when my brother came. This time round, my health was so bad. My withdrawals used to be so, so bad. I had sold my bed. I used to sleep on the floor. In that room, there was nothing apart from the mattress. Mattress, na jerikani ya kufunga mlango. Because nilikuwa na funga mlango, na jerikani kuyo na majinu. The African Institute for Health and Development is in the forefront in the fight against NCDs in Africa. Living Healthy is My Responsibility was an event in the coastal city of Kenya that saw locals being taught the benefits of a healthy lifestyle. With relevant authorities and the government coming together, NCDs will not be a problem in this continent.